To make good images, we have to see them first, and to see them, we have to pay attention. This is easier when we are somewhere we've never been before, because everything is new to us. It's not the same here at home, though, because after a while, we become used to the environment, we become numb. It's like our brain turns off that what it already knows to be friendly and safe, so it can have more space and energy, I guess, to focus on other stuff, like what am I going to be making for dinner tonight? I also have the tendency to get lost in my own thoughts. I disconnect from what's out there very easily. This is what makes local photography, of which I'm a big proponent, so challenging. In a way, we are blind because we stop noticing. Carrying a camera helps because I'm more alert as I'm looking for images to make around me. The autopilot mode is not in charge anymore, at least for a little bit. But after so many years of walking on the same streets and passing by the same buildings and taking the same paths and looking at the same things again and again, this is sometimes not enough. So in this video, I'll share some tricks, techniques, and things that we can try doing to start noticing again, even in those places where we don't think that is anything else to notice for us. Have a camera with you. I'm sure I sound like a broken record by now because I've said this a thousand times, but I can't understate how important having a camera on you is, if only because it will make you pay more attention. Don't leave it in your backpack, have it in your hands, or at least somewhere easy to reach. We need to be present. If we are thinking about a thousand things we have to do later on the day, it's less likely that we'll see images around us. If we are with someone else and we are having a conversation, unfortunately, it's less likely that we'll see images around us. If we are on our phones, we won't see anything. This is why I don't like taking pictures with my phone, by the way. It is just too distracting. If we are listening to a podcast, it's less likely we'll see images around us. Sometimes I do listen to music, though. I find it helpful when there is a lot of noise around human activity, so the music can isolate me from those distracting sounds. No matter what, it's about being present in the moment and the place where we are. We need to avoid distractions as much as we can, distractions that might take us away from the experience. For me, the best way to be present by far is to go on long walks with my camera. I thrive in that situation, and it's also pretty healthy for the body and the soul. Take a photo, any photo. I shoot a lot, and I delete most of those pictures. And you might be thinking, what a waste of time and energy to have to go through all of those pictures just to delete them. I see it differently. Every photograph I take is an exercise, not just in composition, but in noticing. The more photos I take, with the intention of making something beautiful, of course, the better I get. It's also a great way to regain your attention. If you find yourself drifting away into your thoughts, just snap a picture. That should help to bring you back to the present moment. Still, life can and will get in the way. There are always things we need to think about, plans to be made. If you still have trouble and find yourself getting distracted very often, this little trick might help. Look for something specific. Think of an object and look for it anywhere you go. That could be interesting mailboxes, fire hydrants, sheds, doorknobs, power lines, patterns on the sidewalks, you name it. The thing is that you know what you're looking for, so you'll pay more attention. There is always something you haven't seen before, I promise you. It might not give you an image, but this is an exercise on noticing. It's the first step in the creative process. I have a project of signs in general, but the ones prohibiting something specifically, like no trespassing signs. I have a decent collection uh, from a few countries in different languages. It's something I always look for when I'm walking around here at home or in a new place, and it helps to keep me engaged. This is a long-term project that I hope it will end up as a book, but in the meanwhile, it's helping me to notice things, to see things, to photograph. Get out at different times of the day and different times of the year. Because the light will be different, you'll see different things. At night, well-lit areas are more visible, and without other objects competing for your attention, you might find something new there. Maybe all of a sudden a subject that didn't work during the day 
Now it does work and it makes for a great image. On a clear and sunny day, you'll have strong shadows. Those could emphasize shapes that you hadn't noticed before or highlight elements in the scene. Streets are usually empty early in the morning, so you might notice things that you haven't noticed when there are a lot of people and cars around, a lot of distracting things happening, overwhelming your senses. Also, think long term. The same place can look very different depending on the season. There are a lot of fields here that are full of crops now in the summer, like corn and other grains, but they are empty in the winter. That makes for very different images. Do not forget to look down and to look up. We see the world at eye level, but there is so much more on the ground and higher up. Look for chimneys, TV antennas, weather vanes. Use natural frames wherever you can find them. A good example of this is the windows at your home or other buildings or even in the car. In a vehicle, you can even use the rear mirrors. Use them all as frames. Move around trying to change what you see through the window, through the frames. When you have something like this, places that were too busy before suddenly simplify and you might start seeing images where you couldn't see any before. Use your camera, look through the viewfinder. So you might know that I have my camera set to high contrast, black and white, as close as possible to what the final image I'll be uh, creating. So that way I can have a more or less accurate preview. Sometimes I just put the camera up to my eye and look through the viewfinder with no intention of taking a picture at all. It's just to see what something, a scene, could look like in monochrome. Use the wrong lens. So if a place calls for a wide-angle lens and that's all you've been doing there over time, try a long lens. And the other way around, if a place or a situation or a scene calls for a long lens, try a wide-angle lens and see what happens. See what you can see, see what you can find there. This is especially useful with prime lenses because they force you to see through that focal length. There is no zooming in or out. And that sometimes is all we need to be forced to see the same place in a different way. Also, along these lines, give video a try. As many of you might suspect, video is, as of right now, a big part of my creative process. I make these YouTube videos and almost every time I go out for photography, I'm also making a video of that outing. Even though it might seem counterintuitive at first, because it's something else that I have to do in the field, I can steal time and attention from photography. In reality, doing video helps me a lot to find images that I wouldn't have found otherwise. The reason is very simple. It's a departure from my black and white square mindset. So when I do video, it's a three by two and it's in color. I'm using different lenses usually as well. So I see the same scenery, the same landscape in a totally different way. And that sometimes, as I said, results in images that I hadn't seen before. Lastly, use your imagination because in the end, it's not about seeing what's there, what it is, but about seeing what it could be. You have to see the world on your own terms. Art is everywhere. Anything could be art if you say so. It's totally up to you.